In this video, we'd mentioned um, how graded potentials work. Now let's talk about action potentials. So action potentials are just these electrical signalings that are happening from the axon hillock down the axon, and ultimately what they result in is the release of a neurotransmitter. But the problem that I have with a lot of the way that people talk about it is they almost talk about it like as if it were a straight electrical current, like a lightning bolt. And well, that makes a lot of sense pedagogically. I don't think that we should sacrifice the precision of a uh, phenomenon um, with making sure that someone stresses and understands the bigger picture if you're going to differentiate from it that much. So what action potentials really are is they're these very brief changes in the membrane potential in a, in a specific patch, in a specific region of the membrane. And so what this, you know, brief reversal, we're going to go from negative 70 millivolts to positive 30 millivolts. Um, and it's only really done in certain types of cells, muscles and nerves. It is a non-decremental signal. It does not get weaker as it goes down. Only generated at the axon hillock, never at the cell body. And this stuff right here is what most people get confused about. Most people will throw this stuff off. So let's just take some time to really go into depth of what I'm talking about here. So when an action potential is generated, the sodium channels in that area, okay, not the whole cell, just the area, are inactivated and no new action potential is generated there. So right here, where we have this action potential, this is what we're talking about. For this reason, the action potential propagates away from the point of origin, away from the axon hillock, okay? It could go this way, but it can't because of the nature of the cell body and it wants to stay on the axon. Initiated, an axon potential is a self-propagating all or nothing phenomenon, okay? It's not graded, it is either on or off, okay? And it's not a conduction, it's propagation. And what I mean by that is instead of saying, and that's why I like this picture that's showing here, is that an action potential is generated at each membrane patch and every subsequent action potential is identical to the previous one, okay? So what we have here is depolarization, depolarization, depolarization coming in these little wave-like shapes here and every little spike that you're seeing here, if we were to just kind of graph this, this would be the first spike, that would be the second spike, that would be the third spike. That's what's happening. It's propagation. Each and every set of the membrane is going to have this massive depolarization event. And that massive depolarization event causes the, the next one to have the exact same massive depolarization event. And it, have, it just moves along uh, in a direction along the axon. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so that's what's happening. That's what we're observing. Let's talk about the details of those spikes that we're seeing. So I said that in the previous that we're gonna be going from around negative 70 millivolts to positive 30 millivolts when we have an action potential. Um, so let's just start off with the first value here, we have negative 70, I'm gonna list negative 55 right here. No, this is not drawn to scale. And then we have positive 30. So the first thing that happens um, is you know, we're say negative 70, we're at resting membrane potential. Uh, we start to get graded potentials that are going to result in the activation of an action potential. And what happens is it's kind of uh, up until here, it's possibly reversible. But once we reach negative 55, this is called threshold, okay? This is when sodium channels open, okay? At negative 55 millivolts, all sodium channels open. And I probably should have drawn this a little bit more elaborated, but what happens is, and I'm going to really exaggerate the effects here, rather than that, it goes straight up to positive 30 millivolts. So all the sodium has just rushed in, and we're having this massive jump, this massive spike in the millivoltage. What happens though, uh, I'll switch to a different color that's a little bit, yeah, green here. What happens here though is so we've reached positive 30 millivolts, we've reached the maximum amount of uh, depolarization that we can have, we have to go back. We have to reset our neuron to receive the next set of signals. And so um, what happens at positive 30 is potassium channels are going to open. Potassium channels open, and I'll do it in white. At positive 30, positive 30, that is an arrow. I don't know how well you can see that sodium channels are going to close. So we have no more sodium rushing into the cell. And then we're gonna open up potassium channels. And the significance of that is, like I had said previously, that potassium is really in, in very high concentrations. And things want to diffuse from a high concentration to a low. So when the potassium channels open, potassium is going to just leak out of the cell. And it's going to keep leaking, and it's going to keep leaking, and it's going to actually dip below this point here. And once it, it goes actually below negative 70, it hyperpolarizes. Um, I'm going to actually 
draw it like this to show that it's being reset by the sodium potassium ATPase pump. ATPase pump. So hopefully that makes sense. So let's just kind of review what we talked about. So we have stimuli here, negative 70 to negative 55, all sodium channels rush in. Uh, we have this massive depolarization event going up to positive 30, and then we have a hyperpolarization event. Um, this has resulted from the rush of sodium in. This is from the rush of potassium out. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. So lots of things can determine how fast an action potential uh, propagates along an axon, okay? And there's really just two things that I think are important. Axon diameter and then myelination. Axon diameter makes sense, right? If you have this, say for example your diameter is that big, you can only probably fit maybe one, two, three, four sodium channels on it. But if you have a larger diameter, like this big, you can fit a lot more sodium channels on it. You can reach uh, an action potential much faster, you can propagate that at action potential at a much faster rate. There's also the concept of myelination, and that's what these pictures down here illustrate. And so myelin acts not only as an insulator, but it restricts a lot of the ions from leaking in, and it concentrates the sodium channels to the nodes of round VA. So here we see an, a continuous conduction, a non-myelinated axon. If we were to just to look at what's happening here, so there's these voltage-gated, in this case we'll say that they're sodium channels, it could be um, depending on the context of what we're talking about here, but um, stimulus happens, we have a spike there, okay, so went in, threshold, we had a spike happen there, and then another one right next to it, right, so stimulus comes in, threshold, there's another spike, um, stimulus comes in, threshold, we have a spike, stimulus comes in, threshold, we have a spike, which of these spikes, remember, we're having depolarization and then repolarization slash hyperpolarization, and it keeps going on and on and on and on so much in that fashion. And so what you, if you could imagine that, it's kind of like running up a stairs really quickly, one step at a time. But let's look at what happens if we myelinate it. So we have uh, you know, a stimuli, a spike there, it goes in. There's no, it has to, yeah, here there's a spike, and then we'll see it there in a spike. So if we were to look at it, and this, I know that this looks like it's being slower, but if you could imagine this as being running up the stairs one step at a time, this would be like running up the stairs three steps at a time or two steps at a time, okay? And so when you myelinate it, it's 30 times faster. And that's why we call it saltatory conduction, not because of salt like, you know, sodium <laughs> chloride salt. We're talking saltatory conduction in that the word saltaire means to leap. So the, the, uh, Action potentials propagate in this very rapid, jumping-like manner from one point to the next, and it's, it's 30 times faster from it. Um, one of the things that might help, again, people get thrown off by this, but whenever you see that inversion of charge, that's the same thing as a spike, and this is a picture that illustrates that with the myelin sheath, you have that nice conduction where you have very, um, I guess, extended spaces for those spikes to happen. This is a diagram that really just illustrates what I had just drawn in the previous uh, couple of slides, but what I want to talk about is relative versus absolute refractory period. So right here, this is absolute refractory period. This is when a neuron is actually generating the action potential, and it doesn't matter what you do, it will not respond to any type of stimuli. It doesn't matter how much you know, it, whether it's physical or chemical stimuli. Um, the sodium channels are, are open and then, you know, they, they can't respond to that. For relative refractory period though, most of the sodium channels have shut, okay, so in this area here, some potassium channels are still open. And so it's in the process of repolarization. It's becoming more and more negative. Um, and so it is a lot harder to generate an action potential at this point here, but you could, if you had a very strong stimulus, you could convince the sodium channels to open up and to generate an action potential. That can actually be very bad if it happens over and over and over again. Um, and if you've ever been tased in your muscles, you know what I'm talking about. I hope you haven't been tased. It sounds very painful. Okay, so that, let's just say that that action potential has reached, it started at the axon hillock, and it has reached the terminals. So we have this series of action potentials happening in a propagated fashion from one point of the membrane to the next, and it's going to reach the synaptic terminals. And I'm going to draw it like that as a little kind of a blob-like shape there. So when this action potential arrives at the axon terminal, voltage-gated calcium channels are going to open, and calcium is actually going to enter the cell. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, right down here, calcium enters the cell. Okay. 
<clears throat> so calcium is going to bind to something called synaptotagmin, uh, which is going to interact with snare proteins, which is basically just a long signaling cascade for exocytosis of neurotransmitters. Okay, And neurotransmitters are going to diffuse across the synaptic cleft, across the space between one synaptic termini and then a dendrite of another neuron, and bind to their target receptors. And when that neurotransmitter binds, it's going to open the ion channels and result in a graded potential. Um, and that graded potential, remember, could be either depolarizing or hyperpolarizing. And their neurotransmitters are going to be ultimately be review, removed blah, by diffusion. So they're going to just diffuse away. They'll be reuptake. They're going to have them suck them back up in or degradation via some enzyme that we're going to see uh, on the receptor cell's surface. <clears throat> 